So Junji Ito is uh he 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 does horror. Like uh like this one. Oh fuck. Sponsored by Mountain Dew. Holy shit! <clears throat> is that a centipede, centipede head man? Yeah, uh, made out of Old oh, man. I I think I've I recognize that art style, but I've never seen anything with it. Yeah, that. that's fucking sick, dude. Yeah, it's it's real fucking like. Huh. Well, that's the kind of shit that like. Um, welcome back, by the way. Yeah, um, just my that's track. the kind of thing that like um, I honestly feel like they probably pull from in like uh, Dark Souls stuff. I feel like the people over at, at FromSoft they come up with such interesting and unique and like. Downright disturbing creatures. Yeah. For like, um, like that's just fucked. Yeah, that's weird, dude. That's fucking crazy. I would put that up, but I think there's tits in it, so I can't. Yeah, there do is that. tits right there. Yeah, I can't do that one. But yeah, that's just like ugh. that's fucking wild, man. I love that shit. That's cool. Yeah. The one story that I've read from him is the one where uh, holes in the side of the mountain. I've, I've told you about this before. No, what is it? No, no. So does he do? So that's like manga stuff. Now, does he do like a through line story, or are these all like different like mini stories or something? A lot of them are mini stories. Okay, that, and that's fine. That I think that's cool because then like how like, you know because certain things like you wouldn't be able to make a whole yeah show or manga about one little thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure because I haven't actually watched his Netflix thing yet, so I'm not sure if that's the same thing of. Maybe it's just an anthology series, right? Of uh, so this isn't so this is like an actual show. It's not like a documentary or anything. Yeah, right? no, it's an okay. actual show. See when you said when you said like Junji Ito show, like I, I immediately assumed that it was like a yeah, like documentary, a documentary or, something. or something like that. Yeah. No, I believe it's just animated versions of some of his most popular stories. Oh, that's cool. So, hey, it's other dimension Clank with boobs on her head. That's how you know it's a girl robot. She always reminded me of that one guy from uh, Lil Nicky, who's got the boobs on his head. Do you remember that guy? I vaguely remember. Yeah, that guy, yeah. That's what she always reminded me of. So I kind of didn't really like her design that much. I like the color scheme. I just think the boobs on the head is kind of weird. Yeah, it's, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be kind of like a what I imagine it to be is kind of like a bow or something. Yeah, but like it's a hair just bow. Tits. But it's just like a yeah, weird like little bulbous little button things. Okay. Tits on my head. I'll, I'll go. I like her color scheme, though. Yeah, I, I just think there was something maybe different they could have done for her head. That's all. Yeah. But I don't know. Oh, I got the rocket boots now? Yes! Hover the hover boots. boots are the fucking sickest thing. Check this shit out. But yeah. I'm pretty sure I told you about the uh, the hole in the mountainside maybe, one. Maybe. Basically, the, the story is uh, there's an earthquake. Uh -huh. And this guy had gone up to like where the earthquake was and it was in the side of a mountain. Uh -huh. And when he turns the corner, he sees uh, on the side of the mountain holes, perfectly shaped like people. Huh. Like absolutely perfectly shaped. And there's many of them. And they're all like specifically and perfectly shaped to the exact body proportions of each of the people uh -huh. so you know he he's curious about looking inside and all that but he decides not to yeah i wouldn't want to either <laughs> so so what he does is he puts rocks in his hole and like he's showing other people and then like some one guy is like this this hole is meant for me i'm supposed to be in it so he goes and he, he slides into it. Uh -huh. And they're looking like T-posing kind of thing. Right, right. Except for your arms are a little bit more down at your side. And uh, he's camping out nearby with his girlfriend. And 
she's like, yeah, we're not going to go in there. That's crazy and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, why would you? <laughs> and uh, he wakes up in the middle of the night. She's no longer there. She left him a note saying, I had to go. The, the hole is calling to me. And sure enough, she went into her hole. So he finally gets down and he's just like, I, I have to know what's happening. So he climbs into his hole. Uh-huh. And... Oh, tell me this is like a John Malkovich affair, dude. <laughs> he climbs into his hole and it is perfectly made to where you're kind of falling into it. Uh-huh. But very slowly. So you're slowly sliding into the hole. Right. And you can't move backwards or forwards or anything. Uh, right. So you're just going to keep sliding. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it cuts to some workers on the opposite side of the mountain. Uh-huh. And they're looking and they're like, oh, this earthquake caused a lot of like hairline fractures in the thing. And one of the guys looks with his flashlight, and he he gasps. Yeah. And it then shows the picture of what he sees, Uh which it cuts back to the guy. And the guy is thinking about him, you know, slowly sliding down into this hole. And how it's, like, weird and trippy and all that. Right. And then he realizes that the hole is starting to pull him. Oh. So... Because it's very gradual, like his neck starts to extend. Oh. And okay. then his arms start to extend and like kind of pull out of their sockets and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it goes back to the other guy. And what he sees is basically the guy just like looking like a big worm. Yeah. Because he is, instead of, you know, being a hole of the shape the size of a person, on the other end, they're tiny cracks. Oh. And the people are sliding through. Oh, okay. So that's weird. Yeah, it's very it's a, weird. It's a very disturbing image. Well, I'll that's that, well, that's what a lot of it is kind of centered around. I think like the guy must get just like these kind of like weird like odd like images in his head, and he's like, how can I form a story around that? Yeah, the enigma of Amidara Fault. You can see, uh, so people shaped holes. Now is this like newer stuff? Like or like how long has he been doing it? I don't even know. Like I'm not familiar with that guy. I like I think I've like I said, I think I've seen like the artwork before, but I didn't really know the the context or anything. What am I supposed to be fucking yeah, doing? So that's that's basically what he sees. Oh jeez. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it's just a person used to be there and now is just... turning into just a fracture, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Because they couldn't, they couldn't not slide through. That's fucking sick. <laughs> oh, here, here's the thing where he's like, oh, the hole is, uh, is starting to, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking dope. Yeah, man. it's fucking. Whew. That reminds me of. Uh, there's a part like that, and um, not really like that, but like it kind of takes me back to to Berserk. Like they kind of sometimes will do, not very often, mind you, but sometimes. Um, and I might spoil like a thing or two for you by saying this, but like they, um, so obviously there's like, you know, um, like demons in the world and shit, right? Yeah. And sometimes like just to kind of fuck with you, like, again, they don't do it super often, but like there's, um, certain times where like the panels will show like, you know, the character doing one thing, but then like, he's actually like, you know, seeing and doing something completely different. So like, (laughs) and I think the, the creator... Um, of of Berserk kind of like regretted doing this particular one, but in the very beginning, there's a like in this I'm talking like this is like the first like couple pages of the manga, okay. so it's not like I'm spoiling much, but like there's one. It starts off with like a like a picture of like guts like um, having sex with a woman, okay, and then like you know the panels kind of go, and then like you look down at the bottom and it's him fucking like an alien like you know like i don't know some demon thing so that's like the funny thing about it is that like you know the demons can like kind of like manipulate like your perception into thinking that it's a woman but it's like they play it off like you know obviously in a situation like that you think that it's a predatory thing like the demon is trying to like lure him 
into it, like you know fucking it, right? Yeah, no, it and just wanted to get both. But no, it, they, they, the way they play it off, because like Guts is like smiling, it looks like he's meant to do it. Like he oh. meant to fucking find this demon and then and fuck, fuck it. it, so that way he could kill it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And they only they only do that like a handful of times throughout the entire thing. There's another um, part later in the in the like you know toward the end of the um, like one of the arcs, and it's like uh, you know this like character is like um, hallucinating, and he sees a naked woman, and he goes up and like starts like rubbing his face under boobs and shit. But then like it pulls out, and that's actually like a demon with like demon tits, and it's like he's fucking like dying. <laughs> Nice. So they do that, like, I don't know, that's, I don't know, for some reason that's kind of what that made me think of, is, like, just, like, this weird, like, element of, like, um, how one party can perceive something versus, like, in relation to somebody else, you know? Yeah. Like, it's a, it's kind of like a twist on, like, the perception of the reality of what's happening. Yeah, they don't, like I said, they don't do that a lot in that, but every once in a while. Also, there's one chapter in... I think I told you about it before in Berserk. There's one chapter that's just a fucking rape scene. <laughs> like, right. like several, like, I don't know, even how, how many pages, but, like, it's just a rape scene. And it goes on for a... I, I would say too long. <laughs> it goes on right. for a little too long. <laughs> what, like, three panels? No, like, several pages worth. Oh, Okay. Like this is at least like a demon they're doing it to. Yeah, it's a demon rape. Okay, but it's like you know, I don't want to I don't want to divulge too much because this is, that's like a really like big plot thing. But, okay, but like, <laughs> but I remember when I read it, I'm like that whole chapter was just rape. <laughs> like that was it. Oh, let's see. So. Looks like he's been doing this stuff for a hot minute. Oh yeah? Yeah. That's Ever really since he was thirteen. That's really interesting. I mean like I yeah, I'm not like I said, I I feel like I've seen that type of stuff before, but I've not actually like like again understood knew the context or anything yeah. like that. Well, Del Toro and Kojima have both cited him as as an inspiration. Yeah, as an inspiration. That would for make sense. Silent Hills. That would make sense. Yeah. I'd like to see them still do something like yeah. like Kojima and Del Toro because I know they did like death some parts of Death Stranding, right? But like like, like something good. Yeah, well, some, like I like Death Stranding, but I think there's certainly like some things that could be done better. It's too. It's a little too artistic for mainstream. Well, my my problem with the game ultimately is that the gameplay and the story have no correlation to one another. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, no causality between what you do in the game versus like what happens in the story, and that's something that I think that like they needed to like change or do better with because it's like the story is good, but trying to build a game around that story like is like fucking next to impossible. Just fucking rough. So yeah, so like that, like like I think Kojima did as best as he could with it, but it's like that would have probably worked better as like a movie versus a game, you know. So trying to to marry the two ideas together, I just don't think was like the best call, really. Um, but that being said, like what made the game so compelling to me, at least initially, was that it was so abstract and weird. Is because it's like what is, what is any of this shit? Like how does the science of this work within the game, the world, and whatnot? It was the exploration, yeah, of the unknown. Yeah, and I and I still enjoyed. The, obviously, you know, I love the gameplay. I thought the gameplay was fucking fantastic. But it's just like you know, again, like the 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 story and the gameplay just didn't line up at all, in my opinion. Because, like, you would go, <laughs> like, if you played the game in, like, any sort of, like, I don't know, kind of, like, completionist sort of way, you know, doing all the missions, the side missions and exploring and blah, 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 like, you're going to have several dozen hours of gameplay without any story progression. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's, That's like, rough. And it's, yeah, and it's, like, the story is, is interesting and good, but, like, even the story itself kind of has this weird, like, split, because it's, like, I don't know. There's almost like two stories kind of happening simultaneously, and like neither of them really have anything to do with each other until like the very end. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. 
I, I give him credit for doing something weird and off the wall and different, and I'm I'm interested in seeing more stuff like that. But it's just got to be more refined, I think. Yeah, like just a little bit more cohesive. It just felt like you know, like I said, he just kind of had these like ideas and didn't know where to stick them. So he's like, oh, I'll just put them together. It's fine. Yeah, just make it work. I like the game. The game is good. <laughs> game is great. But yeah, it's just like. As a whole package, like there's definitely certain things that could have been done better. Yeah, the gameplay did not rivet me, so it, I couldn't get into uh, I, the thing of it is story Billy, or anything. The, the thing of it is, Billy, and this is a really stupid thing I'm about to say, but okay. this is the reality of the fucking game: is you honestly won't know if you like the game until you play it for like 20 hours. Yeah, I'm not willing <laughs> I'm not willing to invest in it. I know, and that's what I'm saying. Like it's a hard sell for yeah. most people. You know, it's and, like saying, you know, "Oh, you'll really like it by episode 6." I know. That's what I'm saying. And it's and that's, that's and, still less of an investment. I know. And and <laughs> but I'm but I'm being real. Like I recognize that that's a fucking tall ask. That not a lot of people are going to want to spend that amount of time to see if they like something. Yeah. And that's and that's like the hard part with Death Stranding in particular is that you may love it, you may fucking hate it, and and that's pretty much where a lot of people fell on that spectrum is like they either loved it or they fucking hated it, and it's like there is no like in between, and you're not gonna know unless you put in the amount of time that the game wants you to put in because like it doesn't start to open up until like you know a couple chapters in and the chapters aren't short man so it's like you know trying to ask somebody to spend that amount of time like just just, just to give get it a 20 hour try just to give it amount yeah like uh, that amount of time like yeah like not other no other game does that yeah so it's like you know i don't know yeah just give it a 20 hour try let me know because it kind of like it reminds <coughs> me of like uh like last of us like the original last of us game like i honestly think doesn't really start to get good until like several hours into it because it's like the first few parts of the game kind of not great like i'm not gonna say they're bad i'm just saying like they're very generic very like by last, the numbers last of us two last of us one. Oh, okay yes you know like some of the opening chapters with like um with like tests and you're sneaking around and like choking dudes out it gets kind of repetitive like really yeah quickly. it's very you know like yeah like really there's quickly. nothing really exceptional happening. no no there isn't so like imagine that but on like a such a larger scale for for Death Stranding, that's why it's a fucking hard sell. Like, like I would spend my the rest of my time during this episode trying to convince you that it's a good game, but like I, I can't. Like you would have to invest the time, and if you're not willing to, I totally understand. Like that's Definitely a that's not. a big deal. <laughs> it's like but, it's like trying to tell you that Gurren Lagann is really only good for the first half, and then the second half. I didn't even make it that far. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's like trying to tell me that the Harry Potter movies are actually good. I like Harry Potter I, movies. I've watched all of them, and they go in one ear and out the other. I cannot remember any of them, and I just watched them like a year or two ago, and I just don't fucking care. Well, there's the one with the snake. Wasn't there multiple snakes? There's the big snake. Yeah, that's fucking... Uh, Chamber Secrets. Okay, so you already remember. I, like, I remember, like, certain bits and pieces, but, like, on broadly, like, I don't remember most of them. There's the one with the big Goblet of Fire. I wonder which one that one is. I think that one's, uh, Order of the Phoenix. Goblet of Fire, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put your goddamn name on the Goblet of Fire, Harry? <laughs> you motherfucker. Everyone fucking mentions that, because if you've read the book... He says calmly. Yeah, I know. But, yes, but, but in the movie, just, it's different. What the fuck, Harry? Yeah. Well, you piece of shit, don't put your fucking name in there. <laughs> well, because it is very different, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's super different. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And so, there's that one time where uh, they make an order of the Phoenix. Yeah, uh, that's what, just his what, fucking friends. What, uh, what 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 movie was that? That's one? just his friends, I dude. I can tell uh, you the names of all of them. I just can't <laughs> tell you what fucking happens in any of them. Like, uh -huh. I, I just forget. Like, I don't know. Like, I understand why people dig it, and I understand why, like, you know, it's an interesting world and whatnot. But like, I don't fucking know, man. Like, it just doesn't stick in my head. Like, I just, I, I guess I just didn't like it that much. There's that one movie with Helen about Carter in it. 
Yeah, but she's she's in a couple of them, I think. She's in a lot of them. Yeah. She's in a few of them. And she, what, she acts crazy? Yeah. And then um, she, she's probably thinking about Johnny Depp at the same time. You know what I, um, I a video that I saw mm. recently um, that I thought was interesting? Was some party, somebody on, uh, on YouTube made a video about Fight Club. Uh-huh. And how um, Edward Norton, Brad Pitt, and then, what's her fucking name? Helen Bond Carter. I just forget her fucking name. Yeah, but it's her, long. Like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> her. I guess her name is Marla or Marta or something yeah. like that in yeah. the in the movie. But um, somebody made a theory saying that they're all the same person. <gasps> all three of them. All three of them are are so he are Edward himself. Norton. Well, like so, like like Tyler Durden and then Marta are like different elements of his personality or something like that like so he's got like a masculine and a feminine side or something like that Mm -hmm. and he's got a good point though because there's a lot of people like nobody in the movie recognizes Marta like or like acknowledges that she's there and then like you never see all three of those people in the same room at any given time and like you know it's just interesting it's an interesting idea so I don't know so he was having sex with himself no, that was him masturbating. That was the implication with oh. that. He was masturbating, thinking about his two personalities having sex with one another. Oh, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. It is it is actually pretty interesting if you look it up, but I, I don't know. It's just you mentioning her made me think of that. Do you think Johnny Depp ever fucked her? Um, I don't know, maybe. Because I know she's with Tim Burton. Yeah, I know that too, but, but. I don't know. I feel like Tim Burton's a cuck. I could. Say I think I, Tim Burton does seem like a cuck to me. Now that you mention it, I mean that's not a thought that I've ever had before until this moment. But I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> why He's you, got a very cuck nature about him. You know. Yeah. Why? Why do you always bring in Johnny Depp? Yeah. Right. Exactly. He wants to watch. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah. He wants to watch. Johnny, I know you just got out of like this <laughs> terrible like marriage thingy. Yeah. Um, will you fuck my wife for me? <laughs> we'll put it on screen so that you get money for it, too. <laughs> and he's like, groovy, baby. I, I don't know he's Austin Powers. <laughs> groovy, baby, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, we picked up Mike Myers again. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to get them mixed up. <laughs> Actually, we just saw Mike Myers in a fucking movie recently. What was it? Um, oh, what the fuck is it called? Amsterdam. That's what it was. Amsterdam. Yeah. Is that the Christian uh, Bale and yeah. other people in it? Is that the one where the uh, 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 Scotty doesn't know? No. Oh, okay. Scotty doesn't know. That would have been your old trip. Your trip. <laughs> Scotty down. Scotty. Yeah. Daddy doesn't. Daddy doesn't care. To take no, Daddy wasn't underwear, there. Like, to take me to the fair. Daddy wasn't there. Did you ever see um the pen, the Pentaveret? Pentaveret. Yeah. No. That was a show that Mike Myers wrote for Netflix or something. Okay. It's kind of. It's actually kind of funny. I, I would recommend checking it out. It's like short enough. It's like a little comedy series. It's like um, there's this secret organization called the Pentaveret, and it's like a group of five people that effectively run the world, or control the world secretly. Okay. And um, <laughs> in traditional kind of Mike Myers or like you know Austin Powers fashion, he plays like seven different characters on this fucking mo- in the show. So he plays all five members of the Pentaveret. They're oh, all, okay. They're all him. But then there's like this. Uh, it's it, it makes more sense. Now that I moved to Canada, but there's a there's a character like he plays another character who's like a small time like news reporter in like Ontario somewhere, and like he makes all these fucking Canadianisms and shit, and then like you know he's trying to unravel the the mystery of the Pentaveret and shit like that. And okay, it's just like I don't know. It's kind of it's it's pretty funny. Like it's got its moments that are pretty funny. It thinking might, of, might uh, be there. I don't know, it's probably still in there, I think. Thinking of uh, Mike Myers makes me think of Jim Carrey. Oh yeah, just from uh, like those those guys were the comedians back in our day. Yeah. Jim Carrey is a little weird now. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't think that's a bad thing. No, I don't either. I just think it's kind of, it's just interesting. Like, he's, like, a lot of people think he's, like, a fucking loony, you know? Yeah, he's definitely changed. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's changed. But, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, I don't know. But I think he's more real now. That's what I mean. Like, people are probably all used to just seeing him be, like, this wacky dude on, on camera. But it's like, you know, he's a fucking human being, too, man. Like, he's got feelings and thoughts and stuff. And it's like, you know, he's not playing these jokey-ass characters all the time anymore. So it's like, yeah. You know, I don't think I've seen him in anything recently, actually, now that I think about it. I saw him in his last movie. What was that one? Sonic 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forget. Yeah, he's been doing that. So I, I guess that kind of goes against what I just said. Yeah, Sonic 2 I was... Forgot that, uh, I forgot that he was Robotnik in that. Yeah. Yep. That was his last movie. He yeah. retired from, uh, oh, from doing movies now. Now he's just Jim Carrey. Is it, did he, like, officially announce that, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he said that uh, after... Um, after Sonic 2, he's just done? Yep, he's done. He's retiring. That's fine. I agree. He, he had a good run, and yeah, he's, he's leaving on his own terms. Yeah, absolutely. And he was still, you know, in somewhat demand. Yeah. And he was a great robot, Nick. I haven't seen it. The movie's actually not that bad. Well, I'm glad that they... I'm, I'm still, like, curious to know, like, what the the decision was when they, like, redesigned Sonic for the movie, you know? The first time, or...? The first time. Because oh, I'm, yeah. I'm curious, I'm curious, like, if that was intentional. Like, let's make these, like, People. shitty... Yeah, let's make this shitty fucking trailer with the shitty-looking fucking Sonic, who, like, objectively looks terrible, and will piss everyone off. And then, we've already got the new one made up. We can go ahead and just do that. And then just, like, people will now think that we, like... Help to, listen, listen to them. Listen to their, yeah, to their uh, requests. Like, I'm curious to know if there's, like, if that was, like, a thought process or not. I don't think it was. I don't think so either, but it's just fun to think about. Yeah, it's a little, you know... See how manipulative people Because I could see, I could see them doing that. Like, I could see, like, a studio doing that, where they're like, you know, let's botch, like, you know, waste a little bit of money on this stuff here. Yeah. Just, just like, give me something real quick. Yeah, maybe, like, because at that point, then, too, you'd have to, like, imagine that, like, everybody on the team is okay with that happening, and nobody's going to be, like, a whistleblower and, yeah, like, be like, and, like oh, actually. Them. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's real. Like, but I know that's kind of like a narrative that I think you know myself and other people have thought of. Yeah, but I, I think it's just I, that they. I think about that a little bit more often all the time. Yeah, like with the previous controversy with uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, right. And then um, the newest one now, Atomic Heart. What's up with that one? Um, People, I don't really know about that game, honestly. That one is basically, really it looks like Bioshock. Like, I've heard the name, but I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, it looks like it. Bioshock, but it's set in an alternative universe where the USSR never um, got diminished. Uh-huh. So, basically, it's a, US, a, a USSR utopia... Um, Bioshock game. Oh, okay. Set in Russia. Interesting. So the controversy with that is obviously the whole what's happening in the world. Right. Ukraine Russian war. Yep. Oopsie. Oh, oh, oh. Oopsie poopsie. That's me dying. Oops. <laughs> um, the the Ukraine Russian war and how right. some people are like, you should boycott this game because it will um, pay the Russian military and no, allow them no, to continue no. fighting in Ukraine. People people like to think that certain things like that have more influence than they really do. Yeah, me too. Like it's the same thing to me in my mind with like the the Hogwarts legacy game. It's a yeah. fucking video game. It's not pushing an agenda. And I understand like the difference between or like that like, you know, a lot of people are thinking that like, you know, J.K. Rowling's going to be making money from that. And I'm sure she did make quite a bit of money because they yeah, had to license does. it. Right? Yeah. But, like, and I understand, like, that thought process of, like, you know, if you're giving money to these people that they're going to still be able to push their shitty 
unpopular and downright nasty agendas on, on social media and shit. Yeah. Kind of giving voice to opinions that, like, you know, are not good opinions to have. And I understand that, but at the same time, it's like nobody in the world is picking up the Hogwarts Legacy game thinking the way that she does. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, people buy the game because they're like, oh, I want to be a wizard. That looks like fun. Yep. That's why people are buying it. So, and, uh, I mean, because I've seen it really firsthand because, like, I know people who bought it because they're like, oh, I just want to play as a wizard. I've always yeah. thought, like, yeah. the games would be awesome. And <clears throat> even I think that game would be cool. Like, I don't want it, but I'm just saying, like, I like it's a good idea for a video game. I'm surprised they haven't done it sooner. Yeah. And they're obviously, like, friendly to trans and yeah, of course. all that kind Absolutely. of stuff. And then there's people who are like, I... They draw a line in the sand. Yeah, I draw yeah. a line in the sand, which I've met with them, too. I, I feel it's a little bit unreasonable. but I think so, too. It but is also perfectly fine to do what you want with yeah. your own money. Yeah, if you... I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of there with you. I don't the know. only thing I don't like is when people are just like, you shouldn't have bought that... Yeah, you're, you're on a list. Yeah, I don't like condemnation type thing. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really have strong feelings on that particular matter at all. Because as we have established, I don't give two fucks about Harry Potter. But yeah, I understand the the controversy surrounding it. But I don't know. I just think like it's a video game. Like how much power does it really have within like the social sphere or political sphere or anything? Yeah, it's a fucking video game. It's a piece of media. It's no different than like a fucking book or a movie or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah, and the way I'm thinking of it for Atomic Farts is that. Uh, it's just because Russia's the boogeyman right now. Yeah, and it's just a setting. It's yeah. just a fucking setting. Like, I don't know. Like, I think... That's what I'm saying. I think people kind of give it too much power. Like, it's, now, not, it's not that... The company that is based in Russia. Yeah, so they're... <laughs> there you go. They want to set it somewhere that they're familiar with. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, so it's just... Yeah, Because I, I know... I was talking to Anne about it, and she paired it to me like, Oh... That they're actually backed by the Russian government and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, they're, the Russian government's going to benefit from it. And I'm like, I looked at her and I rubbed her head and I'm like, think for yourself. Yeah. Do do some actual things because do you know that or did you just, are you just parroting that to me? Yeah, right. From, uh, you know, someone else saying it. That's what I'm saying. And then like, I did I some know. research and guess what? They're probably completely independent. Uh, they are funded slightly by an oil and gas group from the funded by the government, but whoa, that oil and gas group just funds video games like yeah. regularly. Yeah, and, and all throughout the world, not just Russian ones. That's what I'm saying. People are talking about that with like the whole J.K. Rowling thing, and I'm like, I I haven't looked into it, so I don't. I'm not an authority. I haven't done a lot of like research into it, but it's not. I, I'm pretty sure. She probably just got a buyout from like just the rights. I don't think she's making any money on sales. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I either. I just I wouldn't assume that she'd be making money on sales. But again, that's just an assumption. I honestly don't know. So I, I it could it very well could be that like their con her contract said, you know, hey, I get a, so much percentage of sales on whatever you know. But yeah. I don't know. She, either, yeah, that's no matter what, she's order. rich as fuck. Yeah, and, like you're uh, not gonna not make her like she's already rich. Like, yeah, yeah if you boycott the game, the game that ain't gonna do anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> so and it's the same thing of like when people learned about it and they started burning her merchandise and all it's that. Like, yeah, it's you like, still fucking bought it. You already bought it. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's you can be saying. like, ah, oh, you know, I don't like how Nike doesn't put children oh. into shops anymore. Yeah, right. that's I'm going the, to burn my Nike shoes. That's the other thing is like, yeah, why stop there? You gotta you gotta boycott a whole bunch of brands at that point if, yeah. if you're gonna be huffy puffy about that shit. So I don't know. Yeah, the clothes you wear were made in sweatshops for sure. The the food that you eat was all like you know commit, like going to like pollution and killing the animals and stuff. You know, yep. like if you're gonna boycott one oh. thing, you gotta boycott it all. So yeah. Anyway, next time on Chin Star Chaps, we boycott our own show. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode is just a blank 15 just minutes. About <laughs> uh, uh, fucking uh, Dragon's Dog. Dragon's Dog, yeah!